and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. At this point, well, what can I really say about Star Wars? It's Star Wars! Everyone under the sun has talked about it. We've seen people deconstruct the prequels and find everything that's wrong with them. We've lampooned and parodied the original trilogy. We've made the jokes. We've seen Turkish and Brazilian Star Wars. So what am I bringing to the discussion? Well, how about being the guy that doesn't like Star Wars as much as others? Now don't get me wrong, I don't hate Star Wars. I love the movies, and even if I think the prequels suck, I still got a lot of entertainment value out of riff tracks making fun of them, or the Plinket reviews heavily deconstructing them. But the thing is that in the classic battle between Star Trek and Star Wars, I'm firmly in the Star Trek camp. I think Star Trek overall is better written, more entertaining, and generally just better than it. I grew up playing Star Trek games, watching Star Trek on TV, wanting to be my own starship captain. I can check that one off the list at least. Star Wars has great, enjoyable, quotable movies. That didn't have as much of an impact on me as Star Trek did. As such, I'm much more detached from the Star Wars franchise, and why I'm able to say that when you get right down to it, Star Wars is really kind of stupid. A bunch of religious zealots that use an invisible magical energy field run around with laser swords while little troll puppets dispense pearls of wisdom. Some asshole with a bucket on his head saunters up while obeying the commands of Evil Von Evilton, and a giant slug is somehow a gangster commanding lots of loyalty despite the fact that he could easily be assassinated by just shooting him in his drooling face a few times from 30 feet away. Princesses engage in resistance movements to overthrow empires. Robots that nobody can understand are brought along on dangerous missions on terrain that they're not designed for. And subsequently inefficiently designed gold robots somehow are main characters, even though they have no function on missions. Single planets are also moons that have a full single ecosystem encompassing the entire planet, yet retain a completely breathable atmosphere. And somehow it's better to have a planet-destroying weapon, even though destroying entire planets is probably bad for morale and the economy. But then again, other people think differently and could just as well point out different things that Star Trek has about it that are stupid and absurd. It's the great thing about nerd culture, our ability to converse intelligently about the things we love. Plus, let's face it, superhero comics are kind of absurd too when you get right down to it, possessing just as much ludicrous, absurd, and moronic elements to them, yet I absolutely love superheroes. The point is that, yeah, I like Star Wars fine. I just don't get as overly emotional about it as other people. I got more upset that the 2009 Star Trek movie had the Enterprise being built on the ground than I did about Han not shooting first. But I get it. I get the rage and I get the love. We're all geeks together and we'll poke fun and nitpick to our heart's content. I'm cautiously optimistic about the upcoming Disney trilogy. They seem to be making all the right choices. The first being don't let George Lucas write or direct. And even if they do screw it up, we'll just have new fodder for jokes. Number nine from Star Wars 3D number one. So at the beginning of this episode, since I hadn't really reviewed any Star Wars material before, I gave my thoughts on the franchise at the time, namely that I liked it, but that I was firmly in the Star Trek camp of the nerd star conflict, pointing out several silly elements of the Star Wars universe, which many people took umbrage with despite me going on to say that my very same method of deconstruction could be applied to Star Trek or superhero stories, so not to take me that seriously about it. However, there was one thing in particular that many people rolled their eyes at and pointed out how wrong I was. And a giant slug is somehow a gangster commanding lots of loyalty despite the fact that he could easily be assassinated by just shooting him in his drooling face a few times from 30 feet away. Turns out this is one of those cases where expanded universe material explains away stuff like this. In this case being that huts are actually immune to blaster fire, their biology having evolved in a way that makes their hides pretty resistant to a lot of harsh environments. Admittedly, I feel I shouldn't have to read into supplementary material to get an answer to that kind of thing, but I pull that kind of crap all the time for other fandoms I like, so I think we can call it even. So yeah, huts are immune to blaster fire, and I was wrong. 